The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus has been teaching for quite a while, and we hear him continue to teach. He says to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. You may be seated. As I mentioned earlier, this Thursday is the ascension of our Lord. It is a time when we acknowledge and celebrate that Jesus is um, taken up into heaven to be with his Father. But before that, before that, he has spent significant time teaching his disciples preparing him for this time, for the time when he would no longer be with them. And he has promised them that the Holy Spirit would come to them and would strengthen them and give them all that they need for the journey that they're going to make as the time goes forward. Now, as I have listened to the lessons for this this week, and as I have thought about and pondered them, there are three themes that kind of came through for me. Now, when we hear those themes, it may be that on particular occasions, we will focus on one of them over against the others. But it's important to remember that we hold all of them together. And in that, we walk in the way of faithfulness. And so those three themes are these. Maybe you heard them too. Love one another. Bear fruit. More than that, bear fruit that lasts. And obey my commandments. Now this morning, Jesus, we talked about just a moment ago, Jesus is still teaching his disciples. He's still talking to his disciples. In fact, over the past three weeks, we have heard readings from this last teaching. The truth of the matter is that there is a whole lot that we haven't heard from this same teaching moment. In fact, this teaching moment started all the way back when he and his disciples met in the upper room that last time as they were celebrating that final meal together before his betrayal. And when they gathered, when everybody had come together, according to John's gospel, he took off his outer robe and tied a towel around his waist, and he took water, and he knelt down at the feet of his disciples, and he started to wash their feet. He took the role of a household slave washing the feet of his disciples. Now, good old Peter, he was going to refuse it and say, oh no, Lord, don't be doing that. But in fact, Jesus said, if I do not wash your feet, you have no place with me. Do you remember that? All the way back there. After he got done washing the feet of his disciples, then he started to teach. He says, you don't understand what I have done for you. But you will come to understand. And he begins to teach them and unpack all that has happened. He has embodied what it is to follow him. 
He has embodied what it is to be a part of the reign of God, to be a part of what God's mission is for the world. And what he does is he does action that serves the other. And in fact, in serving the other, in serving another, even if you are in a position that would typically be served by that other, we are living into the fullness of what God's love looks like. In this, there is mutuality. That when one is loving another and the other is loving back through our actions and through our words, then everything is even. He goes on to say today, when he gives that commandment, love one another as I have loved you, as I have loved you, in service to you, also serve one another. He goes on to say, as I have laid down my life. Actually, he doesn't say that, does he? What he says is, there is no greater love than when one lays down one's life for another. And he invites us into that kind of following. Now, there is a point in another gospel where Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment is. You may remember this. Jesus responds with a, a twofold response. He says, the first commandment, the greatest commandment, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with, indeed, your whole being. Love God. And the second is like that. Love your neighbor as yourself. And in that teaching, he shows us that, that loving one another is the same coin, but the other side of loving God. Together, they hold together. And so with that, and we heard it in that first letter of John, we heard it also in our, in, in our gospel reading today, that when we love one another as Jesus has shown us how to love, not this warm, fuzzy kind of emotional affection kind of thing, but rather love that is lived out in actions, in serving our neighbors, in serving those who are close to us and those who are far. When we live that out, we are fulfilling, we are obeying God's commandment. And it flows naturally out of that. There is a way in which how the faithful live, how they make their choices, how they use words, indeed all that they do, all of this points to the nature of their relationship with God. Now this past week, I, I've been listening and in fact, in the larger dialogue of, of our nation, as we look at issues like, like race and those kinds of things, but in many ways, we don't want to think that that touches us. But the truth of the matter is, as I've listened over the past week, I've heard yet again about ways in which people in our community and indeed in our schools and even within our church, sometimes say and do things that harm our neighbor, that causes them distress, that brings them to a sense that somehow they are less valuable than others, that disrespects them. Sometimes it even moves to the space that, that we call bullying, where one is building up their identity by pushing down others. And as the staff of this congregation met and we were discussing these things that we have heard and we have seen and we've had reported to us, as we wrestled with all of that, one of the things that we became aware of is that in many ways, people who are doing these kinds of things often are unaware of what they're doing and how it affects their neighbor, how it affects those who are around them. The cost, and the cost is high. 
Sometimes the cost isn't even publicly visible, but it is there. And we need to be careful with how we live that because that is inconsistent with the reign of God, with the love of God that Jesus has been teaching us about. We have a responsibility to pay attention to the ways that goes on. In fact, sometimes, particularly when we're at church and we're teaching about the love of God and, and we get it and we know and we can say that everybody is within the grasp of God's love. And then we turn around and without even thinking about it, we say something that cuts another down. Don't even recognize that we have participated in this kind of behavior, even as we call for the church to take up the cause of the vulnerable and those who are on the outside. We need to be careful about this. And yet, as we listen to this, and as we wrestle with it, and as we confront these realities in our midst, perhaps even within ourselves, as we think about those things, it becomes clear that life is often, often messy. Living faithfully is not something that is easy to do. Jesus and the author of 1 John certainly make it sound easy, but it's not. And so loving one another calls each of us to a higher standard, to a standard that is something that, quite frankly, we struggle to attain. And so we strive to love one another, and in loving one another, we love God. And in loving, living into this kind of love, Jesus tells his disciples that they will bear fruit. Now, this is kind of a surprising thing. Did you notice that Jesus doesn't start off by telling his disciples, go bear fruit? What he does is he starts out by saying, love one another. But even before that, before he tells them, before he gives that commandment, he then, he, he actually enacts what that looks like. He serves them. He washes their feet. He tells them, even more so, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And for us who have gathered, who are the faithful today, indeed, God has chosen us through the waters of our baptism, claimed us and adopted us and, and named us children of God, beloved of the Lord. And in this, we are called to live out God's love for the world. Now, some of you may have heard a fourth theme today. It showed up last week, too. And I'm aware that some have questions about this, and so I want to lift it up. You may have heard it. Last week, we heard it in this way. Jesus said to his disciples, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And this week we heard Jesus say, And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Now some report having prayers that have gone unanswered. Good, faithful people who want so very badly to abide in Christ, to live in God's love, who want to bear fruit for God's kingdom, who hunger and yearn for some good thing to pass, some prayer to be answered, and they persist in this prayer. These words of promise from Jesus last week and this week in some ways can be like salt in, an, in a wound that is slow to heal. Hearing these words brings questions, so many questions. Chief amongst the questions is, might be this, why has my prayer not been answered? It's a huge question. The most honest answer that I can give is I don't know. 
In fact, if I were to make too bold a claim, too, a, too certain a claim about what the reasons might be, I suspect you might not trust me quite so much. At least I would hope that to be true. But what I do know is that sometimes life is much messier than what we would like for it to be. Much messier than what we can wrap our heads around. Yesterday morning as the men's Bible study group finished reading through the book of Job, and I have to tell you, as we read through Job, there were times when we kept spinning through what felt like the same thing over and over again, and, and it was hard to kind of pick apart what was being shown to us, and there were ways in which Job's friends, you remember his friends, who weren't really all that helpful, you know, surely you must have sinned, or somebody sinned because all these things came to, came to pass. All these things happened to you. You can't possibly be righteous. And Job, of course, had defenses against all of that. And there came a point in the story where, where Job and the Lord had a conversation. <laughs> and the Lord said, you might remember this. The Lord said, you know... You were so busy defending your righteousness that you forgot to pay attention to my righteousness. You were so busy defending your own righteousness that you neglected to pay attention to the righteousness of the Lord. But even that does not answer the question, why did all this happen to Job and why weren't his prayers answered? In fact, what comes out of the Lord's response is that what the Lord is paying attention to in all of his creative work is so much bigger, so much more than any of us can wrap our heads around. And so in many ways, where Job ends is in a place where we have to accept that sometimes these things happen. And it can be frustrating. And it can be painful. And we can, we can struggle in that. The good news is that God is big enough to struggle with us. God's love for us and the relationship that we share with God is so big that we can have those frank conversations with God. And yet, there are those times that things don't go the way we would hope they would go. There are those times when life can be so frustrating and when, in so many cases, it sure feels like our prayers are not being answered the way we want them to be. And yet, the promise is this. It's the promise that Jesus has been making to his disciples in preparation for this time when everything will go sideways and not go the way the disciples expect it to go. It is the promise that, first of all, Christ will be with them no matter what. It is the promise that God the Father will send the Holy Spirit an advocate to accompany them no matter where they find themselves, that there is no place that they can go where God is not present with them. And in the midst of that, there is a call. And that call is this call to love one another as he, Christ, has loved us. The call in loving one another is to obey God's commandments, to love one another in a way and in, in fact, in the way that Christ has in all that we say and all that we do and to pay attention to ways that we, we might harm one another without even being aware of it. And finally, the call is a call that out of that love, out of living that love, we bear fruit, fruit that lasts. Now, all of this, all of this comes because the word of God abides in us. We have that promise. And because of this, we can live in hope for peace. 